that the uh, announcements are getting longer than the message. <laughs> I'm going to call the Pastor Abuse Hotline. Well, this morning we're going to try and finish out, which I don't think is going to happen, uh, on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is part two. I've got all these messages back there on CD uh, from the beginning when we started about the Holy Spirit and who is the Holy Spirit and, and what the Holy Spirit's job is. And uh, I think this is very important that we learn this stuff because Paul said to the Corinthians, he said, I won't have you ignorant about spiritual gifts. And so we don't need to be ignorant about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And uh, so that's what we're going to look at this morning. And uh, last time we learned that the Church of Corinthian was a divided and morally bankrupt church. And, uh, you know, Paul wrote about the problems they were having. There was, there was sexual sin in the church. There was that it was known throughout the community. And uh, there was division among the church. Some were saying that they were of Paul and some were saying they were of Paulus. And uh, also they were partying during communion. It was a zoo, you know. And uh, so Paul you know, uh, comes into this church and he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 1, I would not have you ignorant. And that used to blow my mind because I thought he was writing to the wrong church. You know, this church is, is uh, you know, dysfunctional. And uh, I think spiritual gifts should belong to spiritual people. And, uh, but Paul was writing it to this, this spiritual dysfunctional church and and, and t wanting to teach them about the gifts and how they operated and, uh, and what they were for and how they were going to be a blessing to the, to the church. So he, he writes this in 1 Corinthians 12, 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you ignorant. And uh, the, uh, we also looked at uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
And I said, the gifts of the Holy Spirit were given to the church as instruments of blessings. The gifts are tools against darkness, evil, and ignorance. That's what the gifts are for. So Paul knew that this church needed some help. And so he was going to teach them about the gifts of the Holy Spirit because they're tools against darkness and against evil, and they're help to perfect the church. You know, I, I think of... Uh, uh, you know, tools. Uh, if uh, David Lee would have a car come in this garage and, and somebody took all the tools away, he wouldn't be able to fix it. And so if the church doesn't believe that the gifts are for today and, and don't have them operating in, in their, their midst, they're, they're missing the tools that God wants to give to perfect the saints. Say amen or oh, me. Amen. Okay. And... Uh, so the gifts of the Holy Spirit were given to the church as instruments of blessings. These gifts are tools against darkness, evil, and ignorance. The gifts work through people. Now this is something you have to always remember. The gifts work through people, and we must always realize that the gifts are perfect, but the people are not. How many know that to be true? Amen. How many have seen people with, with the gift of, of God on them and and uh, their lifestyle kind of doesn't match up. And so that doesn't bring honor to God. It brings dishonor to God. So when God gives a gift to somebody, the, the gift is given by God and it's powered by the Holy Spirit. Our job is that we live a life that honors God and honors the gift of God inside of us. So the gift is perfect and the man may not be. And we all have seen how this works. Uh, you know, we've seen big preachers sometimes who, who uh, are elevated to star status. And, and when they fall, people fall with them because they don't understand this. And I think, church, that it's very important you understand this, that the gift is perfect, but the man may not be. So when a man falls, he falls because he's yielded to his flesh, but the gift of God is still perfect. And, it, and it's still valid. Are you with me? Okay. So, if I would go out and get drunk tonight. <laughs> you see, the gift is perfect. But I'm not. Amen. Paul knows that. <laughs> so, but, but you want to honor God. You know, I know that I have a gift on my life, so my job is not to bring dishonor in any way. I remember when I was, I was at Jury de Fete one time, and I, I like buying, you know, homemade root beer from one of them stands. You know, I'll go and get, uh, you know, a, a homemade root beer or whatever sometimes from there. And, and I was walking around, and it looked like a beer bottle. And I thought, man, I better get rid of this, you know. <laughs> Because I could see it in the paper. You know, probably the picture would be right there. Pastor Joe, you know, <laughs> drinking beer. So you got to realize that if God's got a gift on your life, you have to, you have to, the gift is God's dealings and his power. And he's going to work through you. But your job is to live a life that honors God and the gift that he's placed within you. That's hard to do at my age. Okay. <laughs> the gift of God is perfect. And our job is to live a life that honors Him and glorifies Him. So the gift will bless others and, it, and will be a vessel of honor instead of dishonor. Amen. Praise God. And that's so important to learn. You know, you don't, you don't hear that much, but it's so important to learn because... Nowadays, you have people who, who um, you know, take that gift and they build up this big ministry and they have entourages when they come into places and, and you know, all this stuff. And, and they, they've kind of they, they've taken their identity, which, uh, you know, instead of uh, the gift being glorifying God, they've kind of made that gift glorify them. And that's not what it's for. So the gift is perfect but people are not. Uh, they are gifts. You don't earn them. They're gifts. 
uh, Paul said this in Ephesians 3, 7, and 8. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the wage of the grace of God. What's it saying? The gift. Paul was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Now listen to this. Unto me who am less than least of all the saints is this given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. You know, if I was back then in them days and I was in charge of handing out the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't have given one to Paul. Because he was persecuting the church, he was putting people in jail. Yeah, he got saved, but I still didn't like what he was doing back then. I wouldn't have given him that gift. But you see, God has, uh, he has foresight, and, and, and he's, he's foresighted, not nearsighted. When God gives us a gift, we might not be perfect at that time, but that gift sometime will perfect godly character within us. And so Paul, God said, you know, even when God called Gideon, Gideon was a coward, and God called Gideon to, to bring this nation out of bondage, and when he saw Gideon, Gideon was hiding behind a wine press, and he said, Gideon, the angel of the Lord said, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Whoa, Gideon was probably, who are you talking to? And, and so when God calls somebody and gives them a gift, they might not be at the place where they need to be. But God sees them farsighted. He sees what he's going to do in their life and how he's going to perfect that gift in them. Our job is just to say, yes, Lord, use me. Here I am, God. Use me. So Paul says that I am the least of all the saints that I should have got this gift to preach to the Gentiles. And he probably knew all the things he did against the Christians. And, and so he said this, I'm, I'm the least of all the saints, but it's a gift. Have you ever given a gift to somebody that just don't deserve it? Kind of makes them feel, whoa, you know. And so that's what God did. He gave them uh, he gave them a gift. And then it says, But unto everyone is given uh, grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So not only does he give us a gift, but he gives us grace according to that gift. And then Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the statue of the fullness of Christ. So God has put the pastor, prophet, evangelist, and teacher, these are called the fivefold ministry gifts of the church, apostle, prophet, evangelist, and teacher. He's put those in the church to edify you, to build you up, to encourage you, so and to perfect you so you can do the work of the ministry and we're to enable you to help you to fulfill your calling and find uh, your gift in the body of Christ so let's look at 1st Corinthians 12 verse 1 through 13 Lord, I pray this morning that you would open our hearts and give us spiritual revelation, Lord God, that we would not try and comprehend this or understand this with our natural mind, but you would reveal this to us by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 13, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant, are without understanding. Some translations say without understanding. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give unto you uh, to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, calls Jesus a curse, 
and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are uh, diversities of operations but the same God which works uh, in all and all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit underline this. This is so good. I mean it's, it's good. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to just a few people. What's it say? Every man. Now the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the same Spirit the word of wisdom. So uh, I'm going to give somebody the word of wisdom this morning. So I, I want you to see how this works in the body. So the Holy Spirit gives Paul the word of wisdom. He needs it. And to another, he gives them the word of knowledge. You're going to have a baby. You need that. And to another, faith. Here you go, Amy. You got faith. <laughs> and to another, the gifts of healing. Here you go. To another, the working of miracles. <laughs> she, she, she needs that. She's been praying for that gift for years. <laughs> and to another prophecy. Discerning of spirits. Boy, that, that's your gift. <laughs> Many kinds of tongues. And the interpretation of tongues. And it says, but all these work that one and the self-same spirit to uh, operate. So he has given to these, it says that he's given these gifts uh, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work that the one and the self-same spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills. So God gives out those gifts by the Holy Spirit as who wills? As the Spirit of God wills. And so, when you see the gift of God on somebody's life, the Lord gave that to them. The Holy Spirit gave that to them. And you might think, well, they don't deserve that gift. I'm, I'm more holier than they. Why, why did they get that gift, Lord? It's as He wills. Not as we will. So, he gives those as he wills. And uh, you might say, well, can you be used in the, in, in, in the spirit to operate in two or three of these different gifts? And I, and I think that you can be. That God could use you in operating in two or three of these gifts as the need arises. I mean, you might be praying for somebody and the Lord give you a word of knowledge and, uh, about a situation that they're going through. And, uh, and then you pray for them about that and they might need healing, so now you've got the gift of healing working. You know, uh, God could use you in those gifts if you're open to them and, uh, and available and believe that God could use you in those. For uh, verse 12, and, and for as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that body being many or one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized in the one body, whether we be Jews or Greek or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we all have been made to drink into one spirit. So I like to modernize this, whether we be Catholics or Protestants or Presbyterians or Tangerines, you know, we're all baptized into one spirit. We're, we're all the church. And uh, so it says he's made us to drink of one spirit. So we have the gifts of the spirit. Now, why do you think God has given out the gifts to different people. Why didn't he just give them to the pastor? Why, why didn't he just give all those nine gifts to the pastor? Okay, you're close, but no cigar. Huh? Okay, close. 
Huh? <laughs> well, you know, Jesus had all those nine gifts. He worked and, and, and flowed in all those nine gifts. And so if, if the pastor had everything, then it wouldn't be the body. You know, it, it would, this pastor would try and be Christ. So, you know, we, we've got gifts. We're the body of Christ. And so all of you have these gifts that has been given out by the Holy Spirit. It, he's, he's done it as he wills. And see, our job as pastor, prophet, evangelist, and teacher is to, is to dig in there and find out what that gift is that God has placed into your heart and then help you to manifest that gift of the Holy Spirit so you could edify and, and build up the body and glorify God in your life. And I said this before, when I see somebody walk in the door, I see a gift. Even if they come in in purple hair and earrings all over their head and face and, and their tongue and everything, uh, I see a gift of God because God has called everyone with a purpose and a plan in their heart. And we discover that when we give our lives to Christ. So what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Here's a definition. They are supernatural manifestations of the Spirit of God that reveal, do, or say something. These gifts go beyond human reasoning and laws of nature and should always glorify Jesus, and this is important, and be in harmony with the Word of God. So if somebody comes up with the 10th gift of the Holy Spirit, I, I don't buy it because there's only nine. <laughs> and you know, God, you know, you're not going to come up with the 10th gift of the Holy Spirit. So God has given us these gifts and they're supernatural gifts, okay? They're not natural. They're, they're not going to make sense to your natural mind. They're supernatural they're spiritual gifts. They're not natural gifts. They're spiritual gifts. So they operate in the realm of the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen? Okay. So don't try and figure this out in the natural mind because they're spiritual. They're spiritual gifts. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 10.35, For the weapons of our warfare are not natural but mighty through God. See, we, we, need, we need weapons in the church that are spiritual because we're fighting a spiritual warfare. And you can't beat the devil with a, a sledgehammer. You've got to go at him with the power and the authority and the anointing of the Spirit of God in your life to tear down principalities and powers. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, there's sometimes that people are just bound up by, by things and, uh, and spirits, and sometimes we have to pray and cast those things down and break, break those uh, barriers and those, and those bondages that the, the enemy has put on them. And those weapons that we have are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. So the gifts are what? They're supernatural. And if this doesn't register, you know, the first time we go over this, that's fine. You know, if you've got questions about it, just feel free to ask me and uh, we'll talk about it. But these are, this is in the Bible. This is 1 Corinthians. And Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant about this subject. You need to be informed. You need to understand what these gifts are. They're spiritual gifts. Okay, uh, here's a question for you. Are the gifts of the Spirit for the church today? Yes. How many say yes? Yes. Okay. How many say no? How many? Okay. How many won't say anything? <laughs> okay. So most of us think they're for the church today. And some people, 
say that when the apostles died, that uh, the gifts died, and they're not needed for the church today. But I believe that they are for the church today because they're tools that Jesus uses through the Holy Spirit to perfect and meet the needs of his church. Hallelujah. Praise God. We, we need those gifts today. Even much more so today. We need spiritual gifts, manifestations in our church today. So let's look at the division of the gifts found in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, there's one, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kind of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. There's nine gifts. Isn't that awesome? That those gifts could be in the body of Christ in our church today. We just, we've just got to see God manifest those. And so uh, let's look at it. This, these, uh, there are three gifts of utterance. You know, there's nine gifts uh, of the Holy Spirit and what else is there there's nine fruits of the Spirit isn't that awesome nine gifts of the Holy Spirit nine fruits of the Holy Spirit uh, nine fruits of the Spirit love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness meekness temperaments faith so so there are three gifts of utterance these gifts say something the gift of tongues the gifts of interpretation of tongues and prophecy and then there's gifts of revelation. These gifts reveal something. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. And then you have the gifts of power. These gifts do something. The gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healing. Isn't that awesome that God wants to have those nine gifts uh, in the church today? I mean, think about it. The church in Corinthians is a lot worse off than we're, we are. <laughs> and, and so God wants to, I mean, if he wanted to, the Corinthians to manifest those gifts, I think he, he wants those to be manifested at Hope Church. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We just got to have faith for it and believe God for them. Yes. Hallelujah. So, that's the breakdown of those gifts. Now let's define uh, and give examples of these gifts in the Bible. The word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is the supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit concerning divine purpose in the mind and the will of God. These gifts, this gift deals with the future. So, uh, the word of wisdom is, is a spiritual gift given to people to foresee the future. And uh, we see that in Daniel chapter 7. God gives Daniel a vision of the future of the kingdoms that will rule upon the earth. And I believe we're seeing, if you watch the news today, you're seeing some of the things that have actually been spoken, a uh, uh, prophecy given by John and Revelation come to pass in our day. And also in Ezekiel. You know, Ezekiel talks about how all the nations will come against Israel. And you know, you hear today, you hear a lot of sympathy for the Palestinians, but you don't hear any sympathy for Israel. Why is that? It's fulfilling prophecy. And so the word of wisdom is... is, is like Ezekiel had, he saw things that were future. Like John in, in, in the book of Revelations, he saw how the world was going to end and he wrote it down. And a lot of that is unfolding as history goes on and, we, and, and as we're watching it happen on television. I guarantee you that every word in the book of Revelations will come to pass 
just as every word in the New Te in the Old Testament came to pass about Jesus being manifested on this earth and dying for the sins of the world. Every word, every jot and tittle in the book of Revelations will come to pass. Jesus will come back for his church. There will be a heaven, a new heaven and a new earth. God will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. He'll restore the, the, the heavens and the earth the way he created them in the beginning. It will happen. I don't care what Hollywood says about it. I don't care what the government says about it. God's word will come to pass. Amen. Praise God. So the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit concerning divine purpose in the mind and the will of God. And they deal with the future. And uh, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 27 through 30, there was a prophet, and he, he was talking to Paul and prophesying what's going to happen to him when he goes in Jerusalem. Now in these days, a prophet came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world, and this took place in the days of Claudius. So it came to pass. Also, uh, he prophesied about what's going to happen to Paul when he goes in Jerusalem, uh, verse, Acts 21, verse 10 through 11. And as, uh, and as we tarry there, tarry there many days, there came from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound him uh, in his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him unto the hands of the Gentiles. And if you read down the rest of that chapter, that's exactly what happened. So God sometimes will give the word of wisdom to somebody about the future. Okay, now let's look at the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is the supernatural revelation. I didn't get that slide down because I didn't think we'd get this far. But the word of knowledge is the supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit on certain facts in the mind of God. This deals with the present and the past. This is, I've seen God use this many times in the church and uh, the word of knowledge. And it, what it does, it deals with certain facts in the mind of God. The gifts deals with the present and the past. Uh, and also reveals the hearts and minds of people sometimes and motivation sometimes of people and uh, in the Old Testament 2nd Kings 6 uh, 8 through 12 God reveals to Elijah the thoughts of the king of Syria 2nd Kings 5 uh, 25 Elijah knows the thoughts of his servant Gehazi and uh, let me read that to you but when he went and stood if you remember Gehazi there was a, a man that the Lord healed of leprosy and uh, the man wanted to give Elijah something for, for that healing, and Elijah said no, you know. And but Gehazi, you know, he said, you know, he's going to get it if Elijah don't want it. So, you know, he goes out and does it. It says, but when he went and stood before his master, uh, and Elijah said unto him, Where comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, uh, The servant went no whither. Uh, I've I just been hanging around Elijah. And that's not a good, I mean, this guy should know not to lie to Elijah. I mean, <laughs> duh, <laughs> the guy makes iron swim and parts water and, you know, you're going to lie to him? <laughs> and uh, so he says, Elijah said unto him, where comest thou, uh, Gehazi? And he said, now the servant went nowhither, nowhere. And he said unto him, 
Was not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? In other words, he, he saw it all in the spirit. And uh, he said, Is it time to receive money and to receive garments and olive vineyards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? Now listen to this. And then he says, The leprosy therefore of Nahum shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence as a leopard as white as snow. You know, God revealed the heart of Gehazi. What about David? What about David and, and the prophet, Nathan the prophet? You know, David tried to conceal that sin. I mean, he tried to sweep it under the rug. You know, he had, uh, he had Bathsheba's wife, uh, husband, uh, sent out to the battlefield and then killed and tried to cover all this up. And man, he thought he was getting away with it, you know. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, this prophet, it, all of a sudden, God spoke to this prophet. He wasn't even there. And God spoke to him. What David did, I mean, as far as Nathan, he didn't know nothing about what David had done. He had concealed it and, and hid it from, God, from people. But God knew. See, you don't live your life before the church. You live your life before God because He knows everything. No matter where you go or what you do. And so, so David thinks he's got it all take, taken care of, man. You know, I'm, this guy's gone. I'm, I'm going to marry Bathsheba and we're going to live happily ever after. But Nathan, the prophet, God reveals to him what David did. And he comes before David and he, he says, Now David, there was a man who came to town and, and, uh, and you know, he wanted, uh, he wanted a, a sheep. And so uh, he, took a, uh, he took the sheep of this one poor man and, and, uh, in, instead of the rich man. And that's all this poor man had. And, and David got really angry over this. And he said, Who is this man? And we're going to punish him. And... and uh, and Nathan the prophet said, Thou art the man. In other words, he read his mail. And he said, David, you're the man. You sinned against God. And right then, I, I think everything just, whoa, you know, David's sin was made known. And his heart just was crushed before God. You read Psalms 51. David wrote Psalms 51 after Nathan revealed his sin unto him. He was a broken man. He was a broken man. So, in, and in the New Testament, John uh, 1, 47 through 50, Jesus sees Nathanael sitting under a fig tree. He said, before that Philip called thee, uh, he saw thee under a fig tree. The woman with an issue of blood. Or no, the woman that had at, at the well. She had, you know, she come to him and, and she said, Jesus, I have no husband. What did Jesus do? He read her mail. You've had five husbands and the one you're with now isn't your husband. Whoa. You know what she did right away? She said, oh, are we to worship in the, I mean, subject change. You know, let's get off this, Lord. <laughs> so, the word of knowledge, now listen to me. When people come to you for prayer, listen to the Holy Spirit because He can give you a word of knowledge for that person that's on the mind of the Spirit to pray for them. Because we don't know what we really need. And so we might think we need one thing when the Spirit of God tells somebody to pray something totally different for you. And I'll, I'll never forget this. We had a woman one time in our church that saw angels. I mean, she was spiritual and, I mean, you know, she saw angels and everything was praise God and, and all this stuff. And, and one day she came to me and, and she was upset with another woman. And, uh, and so she was beating on my desk. You have to get her out of ministry. And, and she's 
this and that. And she and while she's beating on my desk, ranting and raving, the Holy Spirit said to me, don't listen to her. She's got a jealous spirit. So I let her rant and rave. And she threatened me about leaving the church. And a week later, she left the church. Hasta la vista. But see, people can deceive you. And you have to stay tuned to the Holy Spirit. You have to stay tuned to the Holy Spirit. Because He can give you a word of knowledge about a situation. And I depend on that. I, I, I depend on God's knowledge and a word of knowledge for things that I have no understanding on. For situations. For praying for people. Are you still with me? Okay. How many believe God can do this for you? It, it, does, the gifts are given to who? To every man to profit with all. To everyone. Now, I've seen people that are just, you know, woo, you know, weird with, with the gifts, you know, but they're, they're not. They're they're, they're spiritual gifts that God wants to give to edify and build up His church. So, we see that the word of, word of uh, knowledge is to reveal uh, things. Now, discerning of spirits is a uh, supernatural insight given by the Holy Spirit into the spirit realm. And this gift has two areas. One seen into spirit realm with your natural eyes. So uh, Elijah was at Dothan in Second Kings six fifteen through seventeen, uh, and he says, therefore, he sent uh, he horses and chariots and a great host, and there came by night and compassed the city around him. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, the host compassed the city both with horses and chariots, and uh, the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered him, Fear not. Now think about this. It's just him and Elijah. And there's a whole great host of armies surrounding them. And he says, What shall we do? And he said, Elijah said, Fear not. <laughs> Can you imagine what the servant, you know, all right, yeah, right, you know, fear not. And then his servant said unto him, What shall we do? And he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they with be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of a young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? I mean, Elijah knew it. And he said, Lord, open, open their eyes. Open their eyes that they might, he might see what's really going on. And I would, I would think that if God would open our eyes to the spiritual realm, we would see angels, ministering angels. And we would see things that God is doing in the spirit. And I've never had a, a vision like that, you know. And uh, I, I've known people, I know... One time when I was, I was seeking God, and, uh, you know, while I was seeking God, I was, I was looking uh, into spiritual things. I got into witchcraft and all kinds of weird stuff and found out that that stuff was real. And uh, I, I was looking for God, and I remember this one group called Black Oak, Arkansas. How many remember them? Okay. <laughs> and so I thought they were Christian group because they talked about God and different things like that. So I went down to the old Keel Auditorium. I remember the old Keel Auditorium, to that concert. And it stood in line for a long time. But I remember going to that concert, and while I was watching them, the Lord just opened up. As I saw fire across the stage. And it was like God was saying, you know, this isn't, this isn't a Christian group. He was guiding me and directing me, you know. And so... Uh, I thought it might have been some bad drugs or something I took, you know, back then. But God was just revealing things to me, and He He showed me that. 
And, and I don't look for those things all the time. You know, I mean, if God wants to open our eyes to something and see something, he'll do it by his spirit. But we have to realize that that can happen because there's a realm of the spirit that God wants to reveal in us to operate in. Do you know the spirit realm is more real than the natural realm? Because everything in the natural can be destroyed, but you can't destroy the things in the spirit. Everything in the spirit realm created the things in the natural realm. So that's what uh, discerning of spirits is, 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 is a vision. It, it opens sometimes your natural eyes to the spirit realm. Uh, Isaiah had a, had a vision of the Lord's glory. He said, In the year of King Isaiah, uh, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above all it stood the seraphims, and each had six wings. And, and uh, so he saw this. He saw this. Read the book of Revelations at the beginning. John saw this. I, John, saw this. You know, he saw things in the spirit realm. Okay, the second part of this gift is understanding motives behind a person or situation. So uh, there's an there's a, uh, example of this in Acts chapter 18. Uh, when Simon saw that through the laying of hands on the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands on, uh, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perishes with thee, because thou hast, hast uh, the thought that this gift may be purchased with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. So the Spirit revealed this to Peter, that his heart was uh, and his motives were wrong. He said, Repent therefore of this witness, and pray to God, if perhaps that the thoughts of thy heart may be forgiven thee, for I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. So, he saw that. Well, I, we, we've got left the gifts, of, uh, the gifts of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healings. Those are all gifts that, that are, power, are, are power gifts. And uh, we'll look at those next time. But uh, I just want you to not to be ignorant, not to be without understanding on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And, and God wants them to be operating in, in our lives. Because, you know, Christianity is a supernatural experience. It's not a natural experience. And that's what's kept me alive in, in my walk. It's because I... I've been able to see God move, and I, I've been able to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit operating. So without that, you have a dried up, dead religion. And, and, and Paul said that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. So Paul wanted to know God in the power of his resurrection. And so we need to understand that these gifts are given by God to whoever he wants to give them to and he wants them manifested in the body of Christ and he wants them functioning and working in the church today and I believe that everyone in here has a gift of God amen everyone the, the gifts are given to every man and and uh, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna create a new ministry and, uh, and I believe that we have some people out there that have the gifts to make this ministry prosper. And it's called the Benevolence Ministry. Now, I, if you're here during the day, you'll see that this church does quite a bit in this community. The other day, what really has sparked this, the other day I got here, pulled in the parking lot, there's a lady from the counseling center has a lady that she wants me to talk to. So I talked to her, you know, about an hour, showed her around the church. As soon as I got done with her, there was four people that came in for the food pantry. There's seven calls on the phone 
uh, for different things, okay, that I haven't even got to yet. So after I got done with the four people in the food pantry, here it pulls up a white van with a luggage rack on top and a whole family that GPSed us when they were coming down the highway. So they're pulling in the parking lot right as the last person for the food pantry is leaving. And so they need gas. So I take them over to the gas station, give them $20 worth of gas, gave them some food. While I'm in the gas station with the church van, somebody says, are you driving that van? I says, yes. He said, can you give me a ride home? <laughs> so <laughs> I took him home. <laughs> And it was 12 o'clock before I got to do anything that I needed to do. And, and I think the Lord has been speaking to me about putting together a benevolence ministry that is second to none. Because we've got the ability in this building to house enough food back there. We've got a freezer and a huge refrigerator that can bless this community. So I need about four or five people that have organizational abilities that can come here during the day and that could help organize and and do some research on different areas we could bring food into our pantry and then not only that uh, to be in charge of uh, helping distribute food during the week setting up schedules you know uh, answering those phone calls then setting up schedules when to come in to get food and uh, and just running this whole benevolence ministry. And I think it's gonna take four or five people. And so if there's some of you that are on disability or you have time during the day and, and you got ways to get here, uh, this could be a way for you to serve God. And it could be a blessing to the community and it also could be a blessing uh, to me. <laughs> but it could also be a blessing to the church. So. Uh, I believe that there's those gifts out there. And I know that, uh, that it's a need. You know, I, I'm, I'm so thankful that we have that food pantry that we're able to meet the needs of people because uh, there's some people that just don't have food, you know, that really need that. And uh, Jeanette has, has done great with that food pantry, but she can't do it all herself, and, and I can't do it all herself. And I think we could take this food pantry to the next level. Uh, by getting people to research it and bring more food in. I know that, you know, we can't continue to draw on the church for the food because it just gets too demanding. And uh, we go through quite a bit of it. So we need other sources that we need to, to uh, research and check into. So I believe those gifts are out there. I believe that there's people that God wants to use in developing this ministry. So uh, if that's you, just let me know, and we're going to set up a time. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just do this Wednesday morning. Uh, if, if that is something that you want to be involved in, Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, we'll meet here at the church, and we'll talk about that. Amen. Well, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you want to give those to us that, so that we could... Uh, minister to others and help other people be set free from things that are uh, destroying them physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So Lord, I, I just pray that we would, uh, would study this further, God, on our own, that we would look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and, and understand, have a clear understanding of, of these gifts that you want to give us. And Lord, help us to be open-minded and spiritually sensitive uh, to the manifestation of these gifts in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Lord bless you, and uh, Thursday night's Bible study, Saturday night's Celebrate Recovery, Wednesday nights, Wednesday, Wednesday nights, we've got a lot going on. Seven and 98 TV and web broadcasting 
are made possible through contributions and donations from viewers like you. Thank you for your support.